Okay, welcome to lesson six, the cell cycle in cancer. Uh, I'm gonna be going over some of the concepts that you will need to work on your project later this week. If you haven't taken a look at the assignments, uh, or sorry, the week nine uh, outline that I posted today, um, this week I will be giving you your final assignment for the semester as we will be done after this assignment. We might still do one more quiz and then we're still gonna have to do our reflections, but ultimately this will be your final assignment. So lesson six looks at the cell cycle in cancer and specifically looks at DNA as the genetic information that the cell contains. Uh, the key thing here with regards to DNA is that in every single cell within your body, every single one of those uh, DNA pieces is gonna be the same. So DNA stays consistent within that cell as it does with all the cells in a person's body. It's not the same DNA uh, that's in like your skin and your liver and your brain or what have you. It's not the same as in the reproductive cells, the sperm and the egg. Uh, but it is the same DNA for every single cell. Uh, that DNA is responsible for telling the body or telling the cells how to function within your body. And any mutations that happen to the DNA are, are interruptions in how that DNA tells your body how to behave and how those cells to behave. And so these DNA mutations can be a factor that contributes to cancer. So when we think about cell division as a whole, uh, and we looked at mitosis over the last couple of days, it's very important to understand that that mitosis process is in, in, in a, an attempt to try to get that DNA information the same in every single cell. Those daughter cells are going to have the same DNA as those parental cells. So genes on our chromosomes control cell division, and then those genes are going to be responsible for every single process. So genes take control of every single thing that goes on in the human body. Uh, if the gene responsible for controlling cell division has some issues, like a mutation, for example, the cell will not divide properly and, and an uncontrolled growth or division can lead to several different types of cancers. So throughout interphase, there are many checkpoints, but sometimes the mutation can ignore that. So the key thing here that you have to realize is that even though the cell is very, very, very good at checking the DNA after it's copied it through mitosis, specifically in interphase, uh, the, it can, mutations can happen where it doesn't, it misses them, right? And the cell doesn't check quite properly for those DNA errors. And so those mutations can lead to many, many different things. And so we want to look at how those mutations happen. Uh, those mutations can be as a result of external factors like a carcinogen, uh, smoke or uh, grilled meats or vegetables. They are a huge carcinogen among with other chemicals that are in, found in cleaning agents as well as um, certain materials like asbestos, they can be carcinogenic, it's called, and that has a uh, mutation effect on the DNA of specific types of cells. Another example can be radiation like UV and X-ray. If you recall back from our physics and optics lesson, that high energy radiation can disrupt and damage DNA. And as a result of disruption and damaging that DNA, it can lead to those mitotic division issues, which can lead to certain types of cancers. Uh, as I stated earlier, chemicals in cigarettes, specifically any type of carcinogenic found there. Uh, certain viruses, like the human papilloma virus, HPV, can uh, lead to specific types of cancer, specific, uh, specifically cervix cancer and other types of cancers that are responsible or that are uh, associated with women's reproductive health. Uh, so it's important to kind of get checked for that type of stuff. And then there are genetic factors like heredity or uh, familial causes. If you or someone within your family is more prone or has had cancer in the past, you're more likely to have that cancer uh, as a result also. Tumors are what happen when that uncontrolled cell division goes through and, and they can be benign or they can be um, malignant. So benign means that they're generally harmless and they cannot spread to other parts of your body. Believe it or not, some moles are what's called benign tumors. Uh, they're just cells that divided uncontrollably and then they stop for whatever reason, um, but they won't go anywhere. They stay localized. They're pretty well defined. The malignant tumors, unfortunately, however, are the types of cells that are going to be, oops, um, that are cancerous and can cause cancer in the part of the body they develop, but as well as other parts of the body. They can travel quite well and, and that's called metastasize. So when we take a look at that cancer development, one specific normal cell that turns into a cancer cell as a result of mutation, uh, once that cancer cell has that mutation in DNA, it will continue to divide and continue to divide uncontrollably until there's too many of those malignant tumor cells that are going to continue to divide, continue to divide. So why are those malignant tumor cells bad? Well, it restricts access to blood 
for the cells in that area. So as that tumor gets bigger and bigger and bigger, it needs more resources and it will take those resources away from surrounding healthy cells around it, which can lead to some issues. It can also disrupt what's called the lymphatic system and um, it can clog the lymphatic system, which is responsible for removing waste from your body, but it can also use that lymphatic system as a means to transport itself to other parts of the body and, and cause issues there as a result of being malignant. And that's what we mean by malignant and metastasizing. It travels from where it originated to other parts of the body. So when we look at normal cells versus cancerous cells, it's interesting to kind of look at their cell structure and shape. Uh, if we were, unfortunately, we're not there, but if we were in the lab, we'd be able to look at some slides of what a cancerous cell looks like in the, um, I want to say in the lungs, we have samples of lung cancer cells. We could compare those lung cancer cells to a normal lung cell, and you'll really start to see the differences between the, the misshapen nuclei, and, and there's so many of them, and they're dividing sporadically, and they don't quite look the same. That shape isn't quite there, and the function isn't quite there, and it's disorganized. That's the difference between a cancerous cell and a normal healthy cell. So cancer cells are um, annoying because when you think about the specialized cell in your body, that are responsible for doing very specific things, muscle cells, skin cells, liver cells, stomach cells, what have you. Cancer's cells do not have that specialization. And as a result of not having that specialization, again, it's taking nutrients away from those specialized cells that are responsible for performing normal function. And now that there are non-specialized cancer cells in the area, they're just dead weight and they just kind of make things bad for a lot of people. All right, that's it for this lesson today, folks. Uh, again, if you have questions, please let me know. A couple of you reached out to me via email with regards to the quiz. I will be posting those results uh, in the next couple of days. I'm just waiting for my colleagues to get back to me saying that everyone has written the test, or sorry, the quiz, and then I can release those results to everyone. And again, just pay attention to Classroom on Wednesday when I upload the assignment for you all, and that will be due June 15th by midnight. Uh, this is the absolute deadline for it. I cannot stress this enough. After June 17th, we will not be accepting any more assignments because that, at that point, the marks will be in and it will be that mark. So if you really are going to be a little bit late, June 17th is the last possible point for it, but that's the absolute deadline. Otherwise, it's due June 15th. Okay, folks, have a great day. Stay safe, and I will talk to you later.